Hello. Uh, so let's take a look at our fourth example. Uh, so problem four. A closed tank contains a vapor liquid mixture of steam at 45 bar with liquid contents that's 25% by mass. Okay, so just look at what we initially have. All right, so it's a vapor liquid mixture um, at 45 bar. So I know that if I have a single component two-phase system, I need just a single degree of freedom to pin down the state of my system. So one, or, uh, so pressure does it, uh, and then we are told that it's 25% um, liquid by mass. Okay, cool. Okay, so actually, before we go over to um, the rest of the problem, let's first try and take an inventory of, of what we're starting with. Okay, ah, so let's start. Let's do what we know. Okay. Ah. <laughs> with what we know, okay? So uh, we have a pressure of 45 bars, okay? Okay, and it's 25% um, by mass uh, liquid. So I'm gonna say that the quality of my vapor phase is 0 0.75, okay? So let's go over to our steam tables, okay? I'm gonna go over to my superheated steam tables since I know they're sorted by uh, pressure. So at 45 bars, I find the TSAT 257.44. Okay, so T is 257.44 at degree C. And then the specific volume of my liquid phase is 0 0.00127. Okay, and that's meters cubed per kilogram we have found specific volume of my vapor phase is 0. Point, oh, I flipped it around 0. 0.0441 all right so here's what we start with right we know the pressure or two phase coexistence so we read off temperature and, and specific volume so then A, we're told that the pressure's changed to 80 bars. What is the temperature? Uh, so here's where we need to interpret things a little bit. <clears throat> so in problem four, we're told we have a, a closed tank. Okay. So when we're told we have a closed tank, I'm going to assume by closed tank, they mean a rigid vessel. Right? Um, and only because otherwise the problem really doesn't become solvable. Right? And, and so let me try and explain myself. So in A, if I were to assume that I had a piston cylinder apparatus, so say I was compressing my fluid um, uh, to achieve a pressure of, of 80 bars, okay, the challenge is I don't know if I have a single component system or two-phase. Because if I have a single component system, then I need to know two degrees of freedom in order to pin down the state of my system. We're only given pressure, all right? So if I have a single-phase system, I have no way of determining uh, what my phase is and, and what my properties are. Um, we'd have to be given more information. We'd have to be told it's two-phase um, or be given temperature or something else. Um, but if I look at, um, if I assume that my tank is completely rigid um, and then I look at A, so I know pressure and now I need to determine what phase I am. So I need to check if, you know, I'm potentially in a single phase um, region, then I need two degrees of freedom. So I would need one other degree of freedom one other intensive thermodynamic property I would need to know to pin down the state of my system. So if I look at what we start with, um, <clears throat> since we know the um, volume of the liquid, specific volume of the, the liquid and vapor, and that 25% by mass is liquid, I can use that to calculate the specific volume of um, the system as a whole. So then in A, all right, if my system is rigid, <clears throat> I'll know the specific volume of, of the system. Um, so I could use that along with the pressure to determine what phase I am. Okay. Um, so what I'm getting at, <clears throat> and we did this in, in one of the earlier problems using uh, molar volume, is that, okay, so... Okay, I know from my conservation equation, so in terms of, say, conservation of volume, right? So if I have a closed system in which I have vapor on top, liquid on the bottom, if I know the volume occupied by vapor, 
volume occupied by liquid, then that has to be equal to the total volume of, of my system. Okay, so MV is going to be equal to ML VL plus MV VV. Okay, so if I divide through by mass, M is ML over M, VL plus MV over M VV. Okay, and then we know that M is equal to ML plus MV. Okay, so 1 is ML over M plus MV over M. Okay, so MV over M is typically how we define quality. So in the, the last problem, it was, you know, quality vapor. Here we're given percent liquid, right? Um, so MV over M is Q. <clears throat> then ML over M then would be 1 minus Q, okay? So uh, if I look at what we're given, so if I come up, well, let me rewrite this equation. So V then is going to be equal to 1 minus Q times VL <clears throat> plus Q times VV. Okay, so we know VL and VV, we look those up, we have those, we know QV, all right, Q is 0.75, so I know Q, which means then I can solve for V. <clears throat> all right, so then what I would need to do um, in A, okay, so in part A, okay, I would go to um, my superheated steam tables, so for pressure of 80 bars, Okay, Oop. pressure of 80 bars. Okay, I would have that here. So at saturation, okay, so at saturation, I would have that T is equal to 295.01. C. Then I'm going to look at VV and VL. Okay, VV is 0 0.0235 uh, meters cubed per kilogram. VL is 0 0.00. .00 meters cubed per kilogram. All right, <clears throat> so then the first step is going to be, what phase do I have? Okay, and so if you think back to our uh, P versus V phase diagram, remember we get a phase envelope because the specific volume of the two phases in coexistence don't need to be equal to each other. All right, so if I draw an isobar in coexistence, I'll have... Okay, larger volume is going to be vapor. This vapor in equilibrium with this liquid. Okay, so what's key is that since we just calculated the specific volume of our system, okay, and now I've read off VV and uh, VL uh, for um, our new conditions, is I need to see where V, okay, calculated here, falls in relation to this VL and VV. Okay, so, you know, if... Uh, v is greater than VV, okay, that means I'm over here, okay, that means I have a vapor, okay, um, do like an else if, right, but if V is less than VL, that means I'm over here in the liquid phase, okay, so then I have a liquid, okay, and this would be like a superheated vapor or a compressed liquid, or if uh, VL is less than V, is less than VV, that means I'm in between the two of them, it means two-phase. Okay, so I'm gonna, you're going to have to use, and I'm getting cut off, I'm going to have to use, you'd have to use this V along with this VV and VL to first determine what phase you are. Okay, then I find it unlikely that uh, you have the second scenario. The first is going to be uh, if you have a vapor, okay, and so if you find that you have a vapor phase, <clears throat> Well, you know V 
and you know P. So let's just imagine that we find we're superheated vapor. Okay, so then what we would have to do, um, and I don't know the answer, you need to do the calculation, but I'd look over here at a pressure of 80 bars, okay, and if I need to find the temperature, I'm looking for what temperature do I have, you know, this given molar volume, or specific volume, okay, and so say the specific volume fell in between these two data points, well then I would need to interpolate to find T, okay, that's scenario one, okay, scenario two would be if it were two phase, okay, um, well if it's two phase, well at 80 bars, um, you know, here's Tsat, right, so that would be, you know, your, your temperature for two phase, okay, and so that's how you would tackle um, A, okay, we figure out what phase we have and then uh, go from there, okay, so if it's uh, superheated vapor, then you go to the superheated steam tables and you're going to need to interpolate in T um, for, you know, your given specific volume. B, now the pressures change until the contents become 100% saturated vapor. Uh, what is the pressure? Okay, so B uh, then is actually a little straightforward, okay, because what's going to happen is in B, okay, do we know the pressure? The pressures change until the contents become 100% saturated vapor. Okay, so now 100% saturated vapor, so that's still going to correspond to two phase coexistence because it's going to correspond to a saturated phase, right? Uh, so it just so happens that, um, how do I want to think of this? Um, um, you know, you can think of it as you have a, a container in which you have pure water vapor and you are going to increase the pressure until that theoretical first drop of liquid forms, you know, essentially be like the dew point uh, of water, all right? Um, so it's, you know, a, a theoretical limit, but still this would correspond to two-phase coexistence in which I have, um, you know, 100% vapor phase. All right, so now if I have a single component two-phase system, how many degrees of freedom do I have? One, okay? So I need one degree of freedom to pin down the state of my system. Well, I have one, because going all the way back to what we started with, we know the specific volume of my system, okay? So then what you would have to do, okay, is if you want to know um, the pressure then, is you could either use superheated steam tables or saturated, okay? Let's go to saturated, for example, just because it's saturated, so I suppose it would make sense. Okay, so once you know this molar volume, okay, um, and our system's going to be changed so that we have 100% saturated vapor, it's going to be that VV is equal to V. Okay, so we'll have that in B, it's going to be that VV is equal to V. Okay, VV being uh, your saturated uh, vapor volume. Okay, so what I'd look, you know, I could say look down this column for uh, when VV is equal to my calculated specific volume. Okay, so that's this column. All right, and so say once I find it, okay, um, so once I say find it, um, then you can interpolate to find uh, T, P, um, and whatever else you may want to compute. So it's V, the specific volume, is sufficient to pin down the state of your system. So then you would just go to your superheated steam tables, uh, find when VV is equal to that, to the spe that, that, that specific value, um, and you have everything else. Okay, so cool, that's problem four.